Hello, I'm Keith Fox and I'm here at the European Society of Cardiology Congress 2017 with Stefan Achenbach. And as you know, Stefan is chair of the program. Uh, Stefan, it's been a lot of work, but it's going to be a really exciting Congress. I think, in fact, Keith, you're right, it's going to be a very exciting ESC Congress this year. And uh, some of the reasons, for example, include the sheer amount of science that has been submitted, particularly to this year's Congress. But it's not just volume that counts, Stefan. It's actually what's going to impact on practice, what's going to impact on the science. And I think that's what excites me across the whole spectrum. Where do you want to start? Perhaps with the guidelines. Maybe we can start with the guidelines because, as you say, they really illustrate the full breadth of coverage that we have with EEC Congress. We have four guidelines, as you know, we have the AMI, Acute Myocardial Infarction Guideline, but we also have guidelines, for example, extending into peripheral arterial diseases, dual antiplatelet therapy, and valvular disease. And if you see the spectrum between valve disease, myocardial infarction, and peripheral arterial diseases, you really see the spectrum of, of diseases and management of diseases that we're covering in this and, Congress. And Stefan, PCI is 40 years old. It's middle-aged. But, but there's could, still innovations. You could say that it's middle-aged, but you can also say that it's very young. Because yes. the development in PCI, first PCI being performed in 1977, has been continuous ever since then, and it's not stopping. And I think right now we are seeing how this is extending more and more into valve disease. So this is one additional factor of excitement for the valvular heart disease guidelines that will be presented, and of course for the science that we will see here. And Stefan, headline news some of the big studies that people are going to take home with them, which are the ones you want to point to? Well, I think there are some clear favorites like Cantos and Compass, who are looking a lot at secondary prevention. So, so let's just spell it out. You know, a whole series of studies have looked at inflammation in the vascular wall, and most of them have failed. But it seems to be, from what we you know, are anticipating, that maybe this one is different. So maybe giving up after two negative trials would not be something that, is, that should easily be done. So inflammation is a, an important vascular mechanism in the arterial wall. Obviously, that is the case. OK. But other trials that I would also like to mention, because maybe they're not as big, but they have the same impact on our practice, or even more, are more specific trials looking at how to management, how to manage things. For example, we look at the detox trial that will tell us whether and how we should use oxygen in myocardial infarction, something that we've been taking for self-understood. Or a trial that will look at airway management in resuscitated patients. So these yeah. trials that have a lot of direct impact on clinical practice. And also some very large international registry programs like, like PURE. Yeah, PURE, you mentioned it. 135,000 individuals, not patients, individuals in this case, that were looked at for the influence of nutrition on heart disease. So finally we get some hard data to work with. I mean, this all contributes to the excitement that we and, and many others you know, we've have. We've had too much controversy in nutrition and heart disease. We need some hard information and PURE is going to be part of the hard information for us, isn't I'm it? Absolutely, I'm absolutely convinced about that. What about vascular disease? You mentioned COMPASS. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in vascular disease, the prevention aspect is very important. We have the relationship of vascular diseases to other heart diseases, not only coronary artery disease, but also heart failure. So all of these aspects are getting more and more attention, and they need to get this attention because of the amount of patients that we see with vascular disease. So we start with the mechanisms of inflammation in the vascular wall. We lead on to thrombosis. We lead on to prevention and the large prevention trials after that, the prevention studies. And that's a continuous, a continuous spectrum that we cover here at ESC Congress. So uh, what's your take home message for all the delegates? Well, what my, should they look out for? My take home message is that they should really look out for those trials and those guidelines that give them guidance and information on how to treat the patients that they see in their practice. And there's a lot that they will find at this Congress. And please can I encourage you also to step outside your comfort zone, look at an area that you don't normally look at, because there's excitement across the breadth of cardiology, and be there, because it's going to change your practice.